Hey, Amanda. All right, first thing I see is that these um, products are crooked. I'll put my little guide here, and you'll see that from the top of the bottle and the middle of it does not hit the middle of the bottle down here. So what I would do is one, two, three, four, fifth tool down in the Photoshop tools, and then one, two, three, fourth tool down from that one is the ruler tool. Click on that. Click on the top of the middle of the bottle, and then drag it down to the middle of the bottle down here. Okay. And then click on straighten layer right here, little button. Boop. There we go. Now it's straightened. Now I can take my blue guide and look at that. It's straight up and down. But notice how the sides of the image get all whacked out. So what I'm going to do is go back, Command J to make a new layer, and do the same thing again. Top of the bottle, bottom of the bottle. Bam. Press straight layer. Now it doesn't look as bad. The background doesn't look as bad because the other old one is there. See that? And it might look a little bad down here, but we can fix that. All right, next thing, probably when we work on other stuff, it'll fix it anyway, is the, um, I'm going to do a Command-J again so you can see what it looked like at the beginning and what it looks like now. Get it close into your blemishes. Let's get the uh, hot, the spot healing brush tool. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh tool down. Looks like a Band-Aid. Click on that and then click here. There we go. That one's gone. And there was one down here, I think. Yep, down here. Click and drag. Just click. There you go. Paint it away. All right. Zoom out. Those are the two huge blemishes that I noticed. That's still not looking very well. Let me see what I can do here. That looks better. Okay. All right. Looks better than it was. All right. Command H gets rid of the guide. I don't need that anymore. All right. Next thing is we need to brighten this thing. Let's go to the brightness contrast, little black and white circle here, brightness contrast. All right, and then we're going to take the brightness up. See this little um, tab right there? Let's bring it up to about right there. That looks good for me. All right, next thing is I want to do curves because this image is good, but it's soft. Even though it's focused, it's still too soft. Looks like you put, um, it looks like it has a high ISO because it's grainy, but it's interesting that even if it was a high ISO, why it would be so dark. But let's get in there, let's do the curves. Drop down for the little black and white circles there. Let's click on curves. And I like to play around with this line right here. The, the top one goes up, let's see if the top one goes down, let's see what we got going on here. I gotta play around with it and see which does what. All right, that looks kind of cool like that. And then bring this up for the white, bring this, Let's bring it back over there. Let's bring this over. Here. It's 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 a balancing act where you had your light source coming from the left side and there's no light on the right. That's why I ask you to use a reflector. If you put the reflector on the right side to reflect some more light onto the right side of the products, and the overall picture would look a lot better. All right. So what we're going to do is in the brightness contrast we might do another brightness contrast let's see i turned off the curves for now let's click on brightness contrast let's do it more time i'm going to do it for the right side i'm going to bring this up a little higher and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a black brush a soft black brush soft okay soft round and i'm going to use the black in my mask right here this is the mask right if i put black on a mask that part of the mask goes away, right? So only that part is showing. All right. So I'm going to take the um, click on the uh, little black and white circle here, and that brings up the properties again. I'm going to bring this back down a little bit, and I'm going to make it look like the whole entire image is now copacetic. See, it all looks. If I turn that, all right. This is the first one. Let me just bring that down here. Turn that off. It's dark over here. Turn it on. Now the whole entire picture looks kind of the same. Now put on the brightness contrast of this one, and it looks like the whole entire image is the same. There we go. So now click on the curves. Let's see what we can do with the curves. Click on the little black and white circle there for the curves. Now you might have to stop and go with this video because I'm pretty quick, I know. But uh, play around with it. You can bring the curves down a little bit on the bottom and then bring them up on the top a little bit. Or maybe not bring it down who knows let me see what we got going on here all right so 
So this is hard. If you had a black poster board or black kind of black paper behind it, it would work a lot better because you're using white products on a white background. It's so hard to do that. You need to have black. So if you have black products, like your ties were better for this kind of thing because you have um, a white background. All right. So kind of messes with you. So the next thing is um, I want to do black and white the whole entire thing black and white and just leave the color so do a black and white adjustment layer here we go black and white right here makes everything black and white right so now we work we work with the mask in this one whatever is black on the mask lets the color in or lets the color out okay see the little black circle right there that means that the image is showing through the mask okay we go. I just want to get the colors, get the logo, get the colors of the label and the logo. There we go. Turn that off, and you'll see that the background that's black and white, that's the white background, the poster board, it kind of has like a yellow tint to it. But if you click on the black and white now, it looks like the products are really popping now a lot better. See how, how that happens? Okay. So now you got the curves on there. To make it look more detailed and give it a little more pump and uh, the last thing we got to do is the background we can still see some um, the see the dents in the background back here from the paper all right so what we have to do there is click on our original layer and I'll get my polygon lasso tool and I'll loosely go around the products With my polygon lasso tool, which is my, one of my favorites, that's right up here, polygon lasso tool, second one down on the third tool. Then I'll do a command J. And now I have that by itself. See that? And I'll do a command J again because I'm going to show you a trick. So this one I'm going to blur. I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And look at how much, look how that works with the dents back there. I got to bring it up to about 19.0. And that, you kind of see a shadow. It's okay. Let's click OK. And let's turn on the other layers. And then let's see if I turn that on and off. All right, now look, it's actually looking really good. I don't need this other layer, which I thought I would, because I thought that this was going to blur into the other products but that's good we did great so now look at the background let me turn these off and you'll see the background compared to this background so we blur it and it looks beautiful now and that's pretty much it there we go so it went from this to rotated blemish is gone blur it brighten it up, brighten the whole thing, curves, and then add a black and white to it. That black and white helped out this little top up here because I'm sure you use this. So um, it got a little bit of um, some yellowing in there. So having that black and white adjustment layer is perfect. Okay.